exposing how Meghan treated Harry so badly behind the camera. He is always suffering. Hello friends, welcome to breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple Harry and Meghan Markle on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. If I witnessed my husband consistently sporting a miserable expression by my side, I would have a serious conversation about setting him free. Living with someone who appears to despise you must be soul crushing. It begs the question, does Megan derive pleasure from making people miserable? Could it be a characteristic of a narcissist? Indeed, my friends, narcissists thrive on extinguishing fun and joy in others. They simply cannot stand witnessing happiness, whether it's at a family dinner, during vacations, or even on joyous holidays like Christmas. Spending even a few minutes in their presence after the initial love bombing phase becomes mentally and physically exhausting. They require their targets to be as miserable, if not more so, than they are themselves. It's a vicious cycle. But let's delve deeper into the psyche of a narcissist. They are devoid of humanity, lacking empathy and compassion for others. The turning point in their public downfall may very well have been the infamous South Park episode, where Harry lifts Meghan's head only to be met with an echo, an exceptionally well-executed scene. It brilliantly captured the destructive nature of narcissists, who take pleasure in tearing down those closest to them, believing that their victims cannot escape their clutches. In their distorted worldview, they are the ones who exist and matter, while the lowly servants they marry or parent must be consumed by the narcissist's desires, needs, and thoughts at all times. While people perceive Harry as a man and a husband, Meghan sees him merely as an accessory. Without him, she would still be a D-list former actress, struggling for recognition. It's time to unveil her grand aspirations, for she yearned for the life of a Disney princess. Picture this, my friends. Shopping sprees, extravagant vacations, access to all the jewels, and couture clothing. A world of opulence she believed would be hers. She fantasized about riding around in gilded carriages, occasionally waving to the peasants. But her dreams were shattered when she realized that the British royal family took their responsibility seriously. They expected her to work. And oh, did she complain. Meghan couldn't fathom the idea that she wasn't being paid for her efforts. In the end, she exerted her influence over Harry, pushing him to abandon his royal duties alongside her. She wanted to carry their titles to Hollywood, where she envisioned herself not just as an A-list celebrity, but an A-plus list superstar, the most famous woman of all time. In Meghan's mind, the worst case scenario was that Harry would provide enough wealth to sustain her for life, but it wasn't the opulent lifestyle she believed she deserved. She sought to monetize their titles and prestige, leveraging her own fabulousness to rake in a fortune upon their return to Hollywood. She was convinced that these titles would open doors for her, leading to plum rolls alongside Tinseltown's elite. While her plan had some initial success, it became evident that she lacked the talent to sustain any substantial deals. Meghan's indifference toward Harry's happiness is palpable. She never loved him and never will. Narcissists are incapable of loving anyone, not even themselves. She's been using him from the very beginning and will continue to do so until he's no longer in use. Once the well runs dry, she'll discard him just as she has done with every other man in her life. Remember that clip of them at the Nelson Mandela Day UN speech? It's crystal clear. She couldn't care less about his appearance or his feelings. This is her gig, her ticket to worldwide fame, or rather infamy, not his. Meghan's heartless demeanor leaves me devoid of any sympathy for Harry, considering all they've done together. It's a classic case of careful what you wish for. While Harry likely loves her, in whatever capacity he's capable of, 
The moments he appears miserable coincide with times when she withholds affection or exerts extreme control over him. If she were to suddenly shower him with affection, perhaps we'd witness a glimmer of happiness. But alas, the calculated nature of their public appearances prevent him from faking it alongside her. Now, let's remember that our knowledge of these individuals is limited to what we see on screens. Photos only capture a fraction of the whole picture, and personal experiences remain unknown. However, Harry has spent his entire life in the public eye, providing us with a plethora of images and videos showcasing both his moments of happiness and moments of the opposite. Just like his father, Harry wears his emotions on his sleeve. Pretense is not his style, particularly when it comes to unhappiness. But let's be honest, my friends. Over the past few years, not a single photo has captured Harry looking genuinely happy with Meghan. These pictures may be just snapshots, but they reveal a man with nearly four decades of emotions laid bare. Harry's unhappiness is unmistakable, and we have a treasure trove of hundreds of other photos showcasing his genuine happiness to support this hypothesis. It's truly disheartening to witness someone so visibly unhappy and seemingly in denial. The stark contrast between Harry's glum countenance and Meghan's nonchalant appearance, coupled with her eerie and fixed grin, is a chilling indication of an incredibly toxic and psychologically abusive relationship. It's deeply unsettling to witness such dynamics unfold before our eyes. And let's not forget the devastating impact of the Bowers book on Harry. It's no wonder he's likely devastated. The book lays bare all of Meghan's negative behavior for the world to see, and the impeccable sources behind it leave no room to hide. The unvarnished truth is now exposed, and the repercussions are profound. It's an unflattering portrayal of both individuals, and Harry is undoubtedly reeling from the revelations. Finally, it seems the blinders are coming off, and he's beginning to see what everyone else has seen all along. Perhaps, just perhaps, he's grasping the warnings that William had been trying to convey. But there's more to Harry's unhappiness than meets the eye. It's not just homesickness for Britain, for he has lost so much more. His entire previous ecosystem has been upended. Family, friends, work, and the simple joys of life. It's a staggering loss, with only remnants like polo being allowed for PR purposes. Although I believe Harry to be a fool and an ass, I don't think he would have gone as far as Meghan did with Oprah. He appeared visibly uncomfortable, clearly unhappy with the revelations she unleashed. However, Meghan would have raised hell if he had tried to silence her and suppress her voice. I don't absolve Harry of his responsibilities, but it's evident that he has been grossly used by his wife. But let's dig deeper, my friends. It's not just homesickness or lost connections that plague Harry. He has lost his very identity. He was His Royal Highness Prince Harry, residing at Kensington Palace, commanding respect and adoration from the general public. He was raised with unimaginable privileges, like having the actual army as his playmates instead of toy soldiers. Yes, this privilege came with expectations and responsibilities that Harry loathed. He thought he desired freedom, but little did he realize that attaining that freedom meant losing everything that defined him. While it's challenging to feel sorry for such a self-obsessed idiot, I can't help but recognize the magnitude of the self-inflicted wounds he now carries. What do you think about Harry's true feelings around Meghan? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.